The idea that the human species are a slave race owned by an extraterrestrial society is not a new one. Sumeria left records stating that human-like creatures of extraterrestrial origin had ruled early human society as the Earth's first monarchs. The Amurians and Lemurians were, as all humanity is, of extraterrestrial origin. Ancient Mesopotamian tablets credit on God particularly with the supervision of genetic manufacturing of Homo sapiens. That God's name was Ea, Prince of the Earth. The Q.R. Beth tells us that it was Abam and Ova that were geneticists and who were Amurians, who set foot upon the surface of the Earth to study it and create a habitat for humans to live upon, not to create Homo sapiens. This was another concoction of the authors of an ancient script later added to the Bible. According to the modern scientific thought, Homo sapiens emerged somewhere between 300,000 BC and 700,000 BC. Homo sapiens sapiens appeared a mere 30,000 years ago or earlier in the East. So why did the more primitive Neanderthal man, Homo sapien neanderthalensis, suddenly vanish at the same time that modern Homo sapiens sapiens appeared? Modern scientific thought would have you believe that it was intelligent intervention. Why? To make room for the new slave race and perhaps to prevent breeding between the two subspecies. They assert that custodial rulers knew that they needed to keep spiritual beings permanently attached to human bodies in order to animate those bodies and make them intelligent enough to perform their labors. Genesis 3.22 The Old Testament tells us that Adam, first man, was designed to be a servant. They must never attempt to seek certain types of knowledge. The Q.R. Beth tells us that Abam, an Amorian, was the first man to set foot upon the surface of the earth, and Ova, his mate, were told by Yohad, chief of the Lemurians, not to eat of a certain fungi. Scholars assert that the custodians clearly did not want mankind to begin traveling the road to spiritual recovery. Why? They wanted slaves. The thought was that if spiritual beings could no longer be trapped in human bodies, but could instead use and abandon bodies at will, there would be no spiritual being available to animate slave bodies. The Q.R. Beth tells us that it was Yohad who did not want Abam and Ova to eat of the fungi and told them that if they did, they would surely die. Not that he wanted them to be slaves, but more that it was considered what would be called today a controlled substance. He simply did not want their minds to become obstructed, their life shortened or their minds even paralyzed from the work that they were there to do, which was to create a garden for all to live upon. Genesis 3, 23, 24, cherubim angels shield the way, prevent access. The flaming sword symbolizes the no-nonsense measures that the custodians undertook to ensure that genuine spiritual knowledge would never become available to the human race. This too is a concoction of the authors of the Bible. Abba and Ova were merely told to depart from the face of Yohad, their leader, and never to return. Genesis 3, 17, night, custodial rulers intended to make humans live their lives and die without ever rising above ardenous material existence. That would leave humans little time to seek out the understanding they needed to become spiritually free. Custodial gods were depicted fully clothed, while human beings were depicted as being naked. Ashamed of thy nakedness, again another concoction of the authors of the Bible. The slave race not only disobeyed their rulers, they often banded together and rebelled. This was understandable to the custodians, the Tower of Babel. This is taken from Book 5, Surah 8-9, where there was an attempted overthrow of Yohad because certain people were ready to leave the skyship and live upon the earth. But Yohad told Luxur that the time was not right yet. So some banded together to overthrow Yohad but were unsuccessful and banished. Genesis 11, 1 9 Of all the animals revered in ancient human societies, none were as prominent or as important as the snake. The snake was the logo of a group which had become very influential in early human societies of both hemispheres. They were termed Nagas. That group was a disciplined brotherhood dedicated to the dissemination of spiritual knowledge and the attainment of spiritual freedom. This brotherhood opposed the enslavement of spiritual beings, and according to Egyptian writings, it sought to liberate the human race from custodial bondage. This much is true. The Nagas are seen as spiritual beings who come to enlighten humanity. More anciently, they were humans called the Pomas, and the enlightenment they came to give is what we call today education and technology. The biblical word for snake is Nahash, which comes from the root word N-A-T-S-H, meaning to decipher, to find out. Egyptian and biblical texts relate the snake was quickly defeated by other custodial factions. The snake in this pretense is one who goes behind another's back to deceive, plot, etc., it was Luxur who went against Yohad and thus the term snake was used to define him. 
The Bible informs us that the snake in the garden was overcome before it was able to complete its mission and give Adam and Eve the fruit from the second tree. This is a biblical creation. Jay, the snake, was banished to earth and vandalized by his opponents to ensure that he could never again secure a widespread following among the human beings. His title was changed from Prince of Earth to Prince of Darkness, Satan, the Devil, Evil Incarnate, etc. Luxure, the snake, was banished to outer darkness. See the misrepresentation. The Brotherhood of the Snake has been the world's most effective tool for preserving mankind's status as a spiritually ignorant creature of toil throughout ancient history. The most famous Egyptian pyramid is the Pyramid, Pillar of Cheops, the Great Pyramid. The stones of it were cut so perfectly that a sheet of paper cannot be inserted between the blocks in many places. Pyramid-like objects have been photographed on the Martian surface, Mars, in 1976 by the U.S. Viking mission. For whom did the ancient Egyptians say they were building their magnificent structures? They claimed to be living under the rule of human-like extraterrestrial gods. They wrote that their gods traveled into the heavens in flying boats. They were said to be literally flesh and blood creatures, with the same needs of food and shelter as human beings. Their homes were furnished with human servants who later became Egypt's first priests, pharaohs. It is believed today that as the pharaohs were busy helping to make slaves out of their fellow humans, the gods were making fools out of the pharaohs. It is scribed that Imhotep, reputed son of the god Ptah, instituted the concept of the pharaoh as god-king. They were taught that if they cooperated with custodial plans, they would escape the human predicament by joining the gods in the heavens. They could escape Earth only after they died. The Pomas are the people the Egyptians were referring to as extraterrestrial gods, and rightly so, as most Pomas left the Earth after some time. Many stayed behind and mingled in with the humanity of Earth, as they looked like them just of a taller stature. The people who chose to serve them did so not out of indenturement, but out of reverence for all that they had taught them. The Wu Arbeth tells us that we all are gods. Even the Bible says this same fact. The Egyptians, more than any other peoples at the time, accepted the Qur Beth, although not all of it. Without this knowledge, mistranslation is easily obtainable by the scholarly minded. The Pomas never made slaves of anyone. In fact, they taught that man could upon death enter into the abode of Akka, if their words and deeds were honorable at the end of life. It is at the end of life that the soul is weighed against the feather, if you will. Even the most advanced spiritual master of our time, Mahavatar Babaji, has found that he also has to cross a barrier, a door, to enter into the abode of Akka. So it is no bad thing that until death of this world becomes you, that you may or may not enter AKA. Ancient Egyptians labeled the soul or self, the Ka. They were made to believe that the spiritual well of the Ka after death depended upon the Ka maintaining contact with a physical body. The Egyptian wanted his Ka to be able to recognize its body after after death and to be able to be united with it for this reason, he felt that it was very important to have his body mummified, preserved. Statues were placed with them in case the body should perish. Philosophy of materialism were thereby hastened. The derailment of spiritual knowledge in Egypt was caused by the lack in understanding or accepting the Qur Beth in whole. And thus via the Brotherhood of the Snake, this later created the materialism aspect to their religion. The original uncorrupted Brotherhood, the Nagas, engaged in a pragmatic program of spiritual education whose approach was scientific, mystical, and ceremonial. Egyptian teachings were organized into mystery schools to mimic the mystic masters of Madana and were created by the god Ra. Thutmose III took the final step of transforming the Brotherhood into a completely closed order, as was the mystic masters of Madana. King Akhunatan, Amenhotep IV, spent the last year of his 28-year life transforming Brotherhood teachings into mystical symbols. His symbols were intentionally designed to be incomprehensible to everyone, except those Brotherhood members who were taught the symbol's secret meanings. Brotherhood symbolism was another piece of biblical revolving sword, blocking human access to spiritual knowledge. Ahunatan was the first cited with introducing monotheism, i.e., the worship of only one God. It is from this thought that modern religions descend, as the Qur Beth tells us that the Creator is annoyed by one's worshipping it, as it is everything there is, so it is basically seen as ego of self, self-worship, and the Creator will have none of that. History records that they used extraordinary violence to make Homo sapiens believe the falsehood. Much of the Old Testament is devoted to describing the origins and early history of the Hebrew people. The clan was befriended and ruled by a personality named Jehovah. Jehovah comes from the Hebrew word Yahweh, 
meaning he that is or the self-evident, Jehovah traveled through the sky in what appears to be a noisy, smoking aircraft. Genesis 19, 16, 19, 20, 18, Exodus 13, 21, 22, 14, 24, 40, 34, 38, and Numbers 19, 1, 23. The Bible points out that no one was permitted to approach Jehovah's mountaintop landing site, except Moses and a few select leaders. He threatened to kill anyone else who tried. Ezekiel gave us more or a closer look in detail of the ship. Ezekiel 1, 1, 25, 2, 4. Acts 7, 20, 22 tells us how Moses was raised by the Brotherhood. To establish the Hebrews in their new homeland, Jehovah ordered the Hebrew army to embark on a campaign of genocide to depopulate all of the region's existing cities and towns under the leadership of Joshua, in which there was a seven-year holocaust in Jericho. Joshua 621, 624, 1040. Many people understandably prefer to downplay the biblical bloodshed as much as possible. Thou shalt not kill was transgressed when the Hebrews massacred the inhabitants of Canaan. They ignored the commandment thou shalt not steal when they robbed the dying cities of the precious metals. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor anything that is thy neighbor's when they committed genocide to take away the land of their neighbors. Another puzzling aspect of the biblical genocide story was the behavior of the people being slaughtered. According to the Bible, only one city surrendered. The rest chose to fight and be butchered. Also, Jehovah had manipulated the victim peoples in fighting the Hebrews so that the victims could be destroyed. Joshua 11, 19, 20, Exodus 10, 1, 2. The calamities included vermin infestations, plagues, boils on the skin caused by fine dust settling over the countryside and finally the murder of each eldest son in Egypt. During a night known as the Passover, Jehovah is Lakazan who being summoned as a spirit to wreak havoc upon the earth, as par his agreement with those who summoned him a very long time ago. Since his arrival, the earth has known nothing but misery and pain. His chosen people are the people who today run this world through the means I have mentioned in a prior video. This is why they know they will be successful, as they were successful in the past via the same means they are using today. When celebrities say that they have seen the devil and that he is real, they are talking about Lakazan, and the people of the earth who have turned away from Aradia's guidance have created a ripe world for him to now rule over with complete control. This is why the QR Beth has returned to save humanity, as if even a man were to truly be seen as the savior in today's environment, he would no doubt be unalived. King Solomon made history by re-establishing long-served ties between the Hebrews and Egypt. He also married the Pharaoh's daughter. Solomon brought in special guilds of masons to design his building and oversee their construction. Grandmaster is the most common title used by the Brotherhood organizations to designate their top leaders. Guild members were often free men, even in feudal societies, and were therefore frequently referred to as Freemasons. The most visible and important piece of ceremonial garb in many Brotherhood organizations, including Freemasonry, has been the apron. The most significant change to the apron was during the reign of the powerful Canaanite priest, King Melchizedek, who had achieved a very high status in the Bible. He had a brotherhood named after him, the Melchizedek Priesthood, whose aprons were made of white lambskin and is the standard used today. India is a place where the spiritual arts flow and the religion of Hinduism. Between 1500 BC, the Indian subcontinent was invaded from the northwest by tribes of people known as Aryans, thus Aryanism. Aryanism is the elevation of the white-skinned Aryans over other races based on the notion that Aryans are the chosen people or created race of God, custodial. They invaded just before monotheism was created in the Brotherhood. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness ISKC translations depict ancient Hindu gods and their human servant king traveling in spaceships engaging in interplanetary warfare and firing weapons which emit powerful beams of light. Srimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, Part 3. In India, they use the caste system. If you are poor, you stay poor, rich, rich. No one is to ever help the poor, untouchables outcast as they believe it's your karma. The swastika or broken cross is the most important emblem symbol of Hinduism, meaning good luck or good fortune. All was repurposed by the Brotherhood. Buddhism in its original form did not worship the Vedic gods, it opposed the caste system, and it did not support Brahminical, advanced Hindu doctrines. Unlike many modern Buddhists, early Buddhists did not worship Buddha as a god. Instead, they respected his as a mystic master, who had understood a method by which an individual, through his or her own efforts, might achieve spiritual freedom by way of knowledge and spiritual exercises. 
The word nirvana originally referred to that state of existence in which the spirit has achieved full awareness of itself as a thought form of the creator, a spiritual being and no longer experiences suffering due to misidentification with the material universe. Nirvana is the state striven for by every Buddhist. The word apocalypse comes from the Greek words apo, off, and kalyptian, to cover. The taking off of a cover, i.e. a revelation judgment day teachings. Judgment Day teachings ultimately amount to extortion, obey or die. A careful look at history reveals that apocalyptic teachings first arose out of custodial activity and the corrupted brotherhood network. It was used hand in hand with missionaries and conquerors with monotheism. Apocalyptic teachings preach a final battle followed by a utopia. A prophet named Zoroaster was one of the earliest prophets to preach what Akhunatan started. Zoroaster was named Ahura Mazda, which means Lord or Spirit. Ahura of knowledge or wisdom, Mazda. He was another custodial pretending to be the creator god. His teachings reached Persia where Aryan domination was so strong that the name of Persia was eventually changed to Iran, which is a derivation of the word Aryan. Old Testament messianic prophecies began as early as 750 BC with the prophet Isa and continued. Malachi 4, 1, 6. The Buddhists were awaiting a friend who is smart enough and caring to finish Buddha's work without the necessity of the entire world ending. Modern Hebrews are still waiting for Elijah to appear, while Christians believe that Elijah was John the Baptist, the man who baptized Jesus Christ. What they were all truly waiting for was the return of the QR Beth and its proctor. Zechariah 14, 1, 2, written circa 5 to 20 BC. This is startling because it states God's intention to bring many nations into a conflict by first supporting one side, then backing the other. Machiavelli. Haggai 2.22 Bible believers still think that a supreme being is behind the vicious Machiavellian intentions described in the Bible. When people adhere to apocalyptic prophecies, they usually do so because they believe in predestiny, meaning that the future is already created and unalterable. And this is true in the quantum sense as all timelines are known and unalterable, but one can shift to an alternate timeline of one's choosing if they understand how to do so. Many of the changes and deletions to the New Testament were made by special church councils. The editing process began as early as 325 AD during the First Council of Nicaea and continued well into the 12th century. The Second Synod, Church Council of Constantinople in 553 AD deleted from the Bible Jesus' references to reincarnation. Later, Lutheran councils of the 12th century added the tenet to the Bible that was never taught by Jesus. The concept of the Holy Trinity the Christian Church did not limit itself to changing a few ideas. It also rejected entire books. Many writings rejected by the Church Councils found their way into a book known as the Apocryph, Hidden Writings. By extending a concept of sinfulness to the human method of procreation, every person conceived through human sexual intercourse was to be condemned, while impregnation by an angel was deemed holy and desirable. To note, by angel here is meant a divine spirit, not the palmists who are called angels by Aradia. By artificially inseminating two or more generations in a row, the purity of the final product is greatly increased. It helps guarantee control over the physical characteristics of a future baby. These teachings had another important effect. They helped reduce human resistance to engaging in war. It is easier for a religious person or one claiming religious authority to kill someone if he believes that the victim is inherently sinful. Jesus belonged to a Hebrew religious sect known as the Essences, they were Jewish and studied the Zend Avesta of the Zoroastrian religion and practiced Arianism. From the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Essences were a branch of the Brotherhood in Palestine. Most New Testament info about Jesus' life covers only the three years immediately prior to his crucifixion. He appeared before Hebrew scholars at the age of 12, then again after 18 years of silence. He was being intensively trained for his future religious role. The successful effort to make Jesus the figurehead of a new Judgment Day religion brought about the most famous apocalyptic writing in the Western world, the Revelation. In Revelations, we discover that it appears that the author had actually been drugged, and while drugged was shown pictures in a book by individuals who were wearing costumes and putting on a ceremony for the author's benefit. Revelation 1.13.17 Revelation 4.16 can easily be viewed as the author being taken up through the door of some sort of aircraft and finding himself face to face with its occupants as told by someone incapable of understanding the experience. Revelation 5, 1, 14 is what John was shown. It has been pointed out that the experience described by John is identical to mystical rituals, 
especially of initiation into the teachings of a secret society. A careful reading of Revelations indicates that John's mind may have been influenced by drug administered to him by creatures. The probable drugging of John is exposed in chapter 10 or Revelation 8:11. The same happened to Ezekiel 2 9 10 3 1 4. The prophecy made in Revelation has been fulfilled at least a half dozen times in world history, complete with global catastrophe followed by second comings. This is because this side of the universal mind of the Creator is one of simulated existence in material form, and as such it undergoes a set number of years before it experiences first a soft reboot, then a hard reboot. Seven years later, not once has His coming brought about a thousand years of peace, Plagues, Constantine's purported vision of a bright light in the sky followed by the appearance of Jesus the next night is stated to be the event which pushed Constantine into the arms of apocalyptic Christianity. He convened and often attended the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. The council met in large part to end resistance and to create a divine image of Jesus. The Nicene Creed made belief in Jesus as the Son of God. Theodosius I issued at least 10 laws aimed at punishing those people who rejected the doctrines established by the Nicene Council. A campaign of genocide ordered by East Roman Emperor Justinian to more quickly establish the Christian orthodoxies. The Second Synod issued a decree banning the doctrine of past lifetimes or reincarnation. Christianity was shaped into a powerful institution under the East Roman emperors. Romanized Christianity was another brotherhood faction. A massive plague struck, accompanied by reports of unusual aerial phenomena. A bubonic plague engulfed the East Roman Empire and spread to Europe. The epidemic began inside Justinian's realm, the Justinian's Plague. Many people at the time believed it to be a punishment from God. In fact, the word plague comes from the Latin word for blow or wound. Plague has been nicknamed God's disease. It was caused by biological warfare agents spread by custodial aircraft. The same as in ancient Mesopotamia. According to apocalyptic prophecy, an event like Justinian's Plague is supposed to herald the coming of a new messiah. Sure enough, he arrived, his name was Muhammad. Proclaimed in adulthood as the new savior, Muhammad became the leader of a new monotheistic apocalyptic religion called Islam. Like Moses and Jesus, Muhammad was supported by the corrupted brotherhood. His own statement states that his religious mission was triggered by an apparition, an angle named Gabriel, a Christian angel. The message given was a new religion called Islam, which means surrender. Muslims, which comes from the word Muslim, one who submits. This religion was a copy of the religion established by the Moors of America by its followers termed Muslims and Islam, meaning peace. Many states of America today still bear the names associated with their religion. Islamism, the way of peace. Untold lives were lost during the Eastern Islamic conquest because the Islamic armies were prone to commit fearsome genocides as part of their mission to bring utopia to mankind. 500 years after Muhammad, the Crusades by the Christians took place to force the Muslims out of the so-called Holy Land. Behind the Crusades lay the Brotherhood, the Knights Hospitaller, and the Knights Templar. The Assassins are one of the several Brotherhood branches promoting the cause of this new Islam. The word Assassins comes from the word Hashin, which means users of Hashish. One of the earliest people to describe the Assassins killing tech was Marco Polo. Today, Assassins are called the Aga Khan. The word Messiah has had several meanings from simply teacher to liberator. A messiah could be anyone from a person who develops a successful science of the spirit to someone who is actually able to spiritually liberate the human race. Aradia calls such a person the Proctor of the Hydeans. When most people think of a messiah, they see a person dressed in spotless white who thinks, speaks, and behaves in the saintliest of manner. This may be the wrong image to look for in determining whether or not someone had made the discoveries necessary to achieve spiritual salvation. It follows that a person who might discover a route to spiritual salvation may not be a saint at all. In fact, it is more likely that such an individual would exhibit as many character flaws as any other person. The test is whether that root truly and clearly brings about spiritual recovery in others, and in the case of the Hidian Proctor, can that person expound the knowledge contained in the QR Beth in depth and manage the affairs of the priesthood? It is an unfortunate fact of life that the means will always shape the ends. No matter how noble an end may be, the final result will always resemble the means used to attain it. A group with less lofty aims can sometimes achieve far more good, even more than its own members may have intended, if it is employing honest, constructive means to attaining its purpose. Pope Innocent IV attempted to turn the papacy into the world's highest political authority by proclaiming that the Pope was the vicar, earthly representative, proctor of the creator, to whom every human creature is subjected. Plagues were set. The Black Death began in Asia and spread to Europe, killing well over 25 million people, about one trove of all Europeans. 
over 100 million people died. Two types of plagues caused the Black Death, the Bubonic Plague, and the Pneumonic Plague. The greatest puzzle about the Black Plague is how it was able to strike isolated human populations which had no contact with earlier infected areas. First there were reports of a foul-smelling mists and bright lights, UFOs. Reports of deadly mists and pestilential fogs come from all over the world. In the Bible, plagues were said to be Jehovah's method of punishing people for evil. 1 Samuel 5 6, 5 9, 5 11, 12. The combination of plague, inquisition, and genocide provided all of the elements needed to fulfill apocalyptic prophecy. A great many people were proclaiming that the end days were at hand. True to prophecy, new messiahs from God emerged with promises of an imminent utopia. The Brotherhood and some of its most advanced initiates had become known by a Latin name, the Illuminati, which means Illuminated Enlightened Ones. One of the Illuminati's most important branches in Germany was the mystical Rosicrucian organization. The Illuminati and the Rosicrucians were major powers behind a new wave of religious movements during the plague years. One was the mystical religion, the Friends of God. Catholics believed in the importance of paying indulgences, money paid to compensate for sin. Later, Catholic priest Luther convinced people that salvation is dependent entirely upon the grace of a monotheistic God. There was only one way an individual could take to obtain God's grace to believe in Jesus as Savior and to accept Christ's agony and crucifixion as penance for one's own sins. This was based on karma. In monotheism, karma usually comes in the form of God's inevitable punishment for sin and rewards for good. The world one creates is the world that comes back to one through action or inaction. But Luther's confessionals were unsatisfactory. He felt compelled to invent another way to escape the karma cycle, enforced by the rewards and punishments of his monotheistic God. Luther therefore developed the idea that God would allow Jesus' pain and suffering on the cross to become the boomerang for everybody. In other words, by believing in Jesus, you will not spiritually suffer for the bad things you have done in the past, because Jesus has already suffered for you. It's boggling to the mind that people actually believed this. Many people do feel and act better after proclaiming Christ, because they have acknowledged their spiritual existence in a way they had not done before, and they often begin more ethical behavior as a result. But their act of belief has not caused them to overcome the many other barriers which stand in the way of complete spiritual recovery. After Luther's death, Sir Francis Bacon, 1561-1626, supported this religion. His greatest contribution was the creation of an authorized English Protestant Bible under his king, James I. It was released in 1611 AD, the greatest scheme in Christian history. John Calvin published his first religious tract in 1536 in Basel, Switzerland. His interpretations of Protestant doctrine was named after him, Calvinism, headquartered in Geneva. He proclaimed that a person's spiritual salvation, or lack of it, was already predetermined by God before birth. Predestination. Another Brotherhood faction. In 1694, a group of Rosicrucian leaders from Europe founded a colony in what is today the state of Pennsylvania. George Washington was initiated into Freemasonry on November 4th of 1752 at the age of 20. Under the leadership of a man named Samuel Adams, a secret organization calling itself the Sons of Liberty, began to commit acts of violence and terrorism. The Boston Massacre was one. The hierarchy of mobs was established during Sam Adams' rule of Boston. The lower classes, servants, Negroes, and sailors were placed under the command of a Superior set consisting of the master masons carpenters of the town, above them were put the merchants mob and the sons of liberty. The two major forms of Freemasonry practiced in the U.S. are the York Rite and the Scottish Rite. The first American lodge was established in Charleston, South Carolina. After several years of controversy, America's first central bank, the Bank of the United States, was chartered in 1791. It expired 23 years later and renewed by Andrew Jackson in 1836 and finally became the Federal Reserve Bank. Genocides are committed by grouping people into superficial categories, usually based upon race, religion, or nationality. The victims are then targeted for slaughter, even though they may have done no crimes. Those who fell into the wrong categories were deemed members of an undesirable social class and were killed. Meyer Amschel Rothschild, 1743-1812, founder of one of the most influential banking houses of Europe, began his career in the Jewish ghetto of Frankfurt. The Scottish degrees used in German lodges were Christian in nature. This created a problem for Jewish men like Rothschild who may have wanted to join. To solve the dilemma, efforts were made in Jewish communities to change certain rituals in order to make Freemasonry acceptable to Jews. Special Jewish lodges were created, such as the Melchizedek Lodges in honor of the Testament priest, King. 
Across the ocean, the name of Melchizedek was about to be resurrected on the American continent during what some people believe to have been a series of significant UFO episodes. These episodes gave the New World a new religion, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, better known as the Mormon Church. The events in New York included a vision leading to the founding of the Mormon Church by a teenage youth named Joseph Smith. The Book of Mormon is said to be a translation of the ancient metal plates that Smith had dug up at the command of an angel. The basic spiritual beliefs are, humans are immortal beings occupying human bodies. The spirit is the true source of intelligence and personality, not the body. As spiritual beings, we existed before birth and will exist after death. The true goal of life is to improve spiritually, and everyone can eventually achieve a rehabilitated spiritual state that mirrors the state of a supreme being. They teach that everyone lived with the Heavenly Father, God. Before coming to Earth as part of God's grand plan, people were sent to Earth in order to learn right from wrong and to demonstrate to God that they prefer doing good over evil. However, something is done to all spiritual beings who are sent to Earth. They are induced with amnesia about their pre-birth existence. Knowing this about the Mormon teachings would leave one who was spiritual-minded to ponder why all spiritual people didn't join this religion. The custodial society veils it. Mormons suggest that custodians took advantage of the deterioration and used it to suit their needs. Mormonism is yet another branch of the Brotherhood Network. Joseph Smith was made a Master Mason on March 16, 1842 in a lodge in Illinois. He created the multi-leveled priesthood patterned after Freemasonry. Mormons teach that God plans to eliminate the spirit world as his great plan for utopia. Materialism begins. In the English-speaking world, the newly organized central banks exerted significant political influence through an organization they supported known as the Round Table. The Round Table was founded by an Englishman named Cecil Rhodes, 1853 to 1902. Rhodes had created a vast diamond and gold mining operation in South Africa, and in the two African nations named after him, Northern and Southern Rhodesia, today Zambia and Zimbabwe. Rhodes, who was educated at Oxford, exploited mineral resources of Africa and to make the Southern African continent a vital part of the British Empire. Note, this was done by the means of the genocide of an African people, just like what is going on right now in the Sudan that the world is not being told about. Rhodes also wanted to unify people by making English the universal language. In his last will, Rhodes also created the famous Rhodes Scholarship, a program still in operation today. This scholarship program is designed to promote feelings of universal citizenship based upon Anglo-Saxon, Aryan traditions. Rhodes' secret society, the Round Table, was born in 1891. He died in 1902. Lionel Curtis established a local chapter of the Round Table called the Royal Institute of International Affairs. In the U.S., the Round Table Front Group was named the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR. The chairman of the CFR for many years has been David Rockefeller, former chairman of the Chase Manhattan Bank. To many people living, the period from 1941 to the mid-30s was full-blown fulfillment of apocalyptic prophecy, World War Worldwide influenza epidemic that killed tens of millions in a short time, and a financial collapse. This is the playbook. You are watching it happen now. Changes occurred. Behind the German materialization lay the Brotherhood Network, in the early 1900s, mystical organizations in Germany were exposing a curious mix of Aryan master race ideology. Houston Stuart Chamberlain extolled the glories of Germanism. From Germany would arise a new race of Superman. Chamberlain believed in eugenics, improving the human race by carefully choosing natural parents, and he proclaimed that all Aryan Germans had a duty to breed the super race from their Aryan seed. He stated that Jews introduced an alien influence to Europe and that they debased all cultures in which they became assimilated, alike. Members of the mystical network had once again started a brutal and senseless war. In 1989 and the early 1900s, Russia and most Eastern European nations voluntarily dismantled communism in their nations to replace it with Western-style democracy. The Soviet Union was abolished, and most of the Soviet republics became independent countries united in a loosely knit confederation called the Commonwealth of Independent States, the Soviet Union's central bank is called the Gaz Bank. It creates money out of nothing just as Western banks do. Before the provisional government was established, Russia was ruled by a czar, emperor. The last czar had at his disposal a vast intelligence network known as the Okhrana. They had spies known as agent provocateurs. This is someone who deliberately agitates others into committing illegal or disruptive acts, usually in order to discredit or arrest the manipulated victim. In America and other nations today, 
Agent provocateurs are often used by police agencies to entrap or compromise targeted individuals, sting operations. If a targeted individual does not commit an act for which he or she can be defamed, compromised or imprisoned, he must be made to commit one. Today the KGB is the Okarana, another brotherhood network. The digression from spiritual knowledge to materialism ideology appears to follow a graduated path from one into the other. Spiritual reality and physical reality. Efforts to cure people from mental affliction are as old as history. The stimulus response model of behavior developed at Leipzig quickly became the new wave in psychiatry and received considerable support from the German government. Experimenters theorized that mental illness could be cured by strictly psychological means, such as with drugs, shock treatment, or brain surgery. Out of these theories arose a multi-billion dollar drug industry which pours out huge quantities of mood, altering drugs every year. Psychotropic drugs are a mammoth industry. They comprise a large portion of the total prescription drug trade, which in 1978 amounted to an estimated $16.7 billion wholesale value in global sales by U.S. manufacturers alone. Can you even imagine that amount today? The epidemic drug use is not an accident. A surprisingly large number of people who commit apparently senseless acts of violence, such as shooting sprees and other grisly headline-grabbing acts, are people who were previously treated with such psychotropic drugs. Drug-oriented psychiatry tells us, feeling depressed, take a drug. Feeling too happy, take a drug. Feeling unable to cope, take a drug. Feeling too able to cope, megalomanical, take a drug. Feeling confused and uncertain, take a drug. Feeling too certain, delusional, take a drug. Can't sleep, take a drug. Too sleepy, take a drug. Not seeing things that are there, hallucinations, take a drug. Want to feel better mentally and emotionally? Take a drug. Judges and lawmakers who demand stiffer penalties against illegal drug pushers are among those who are quickest to set up the legal machinery for committing people involuntarily to mental institutions where drugs as powerful as anything of the illegal market are routinely and openly used. Doctors are trained in medical schools to cure physical problems by physical means, bombard an infection with antibiotics or fix a broken leg with a cast. Such an approach misses the mark because a broken mind must be healed under an entirely different set of rules. Problem treatment, cure, fix. Drugs equals profit equals materialism. Many Christians and mystics anticipated an imminent second coming of Christ. Touré to prophecy it came. Heralding Jesus' second coming was the resurrected Count of Saint Germain, the mysterious brotherhood agent of the 18th century. In the early 1930s, a man named Guy Warren Ballard claimed that Saint Germain had spoken to him on a mountain in California, Mount Shasta. Whatever the truth may or may not be, it is unquestionable that Mount Shasta has long been a focus of mystical activity and UFO phenomenon. Mr. Ballard began a full-time career spreading the teachings of the new Saint Germain. Ballard established the I Am Foundation, an organization with secret initiations and step-by-step -step teachings. The initial meetings between Ballard and Saint Germain took place between August and October 1930. Saint Germain had Ballard drink a liquid which caused a strong physical reaction and made Ballard go out of body. Later, he was able to go out of body without the drink. He would go on trips in this state with Saint Germain. One place he would go was a mountain in the Teton Range of Wyoming. Ballard says there was a sealed tunnel entrance near the top of the mount. That led to elevators. The elevators took the occupants to a location 2,000 feet down into an underground complex of huge halls, storage spaces, and mines. In one of the large underground rooms, Mr. Ballard claims that he saw an all-seeing eye symbol on the wall. There was also a large machine which Ballard described as a disc of gold at least 12 feet in diameter. Quote, As I learned later, at certain times for special purposes, great cosmic beings pour through these discs, their powerful currents of force. Mr. Ballard claims that some of the Brotherhood's great cosmic beings are of extraterrestrial origin. He was told that the currents of force emitted by the machine were directed to the humanity of Earth. This radiation affects the seven ganglionic centers, nerve centers outside the brain and spinal cord, within every human body on our planet, as well as all animal and plant life. The Soviet Union has been developing and using electronic tranquilizing machines to behaviorally affect large populations. Such devices are also being proposed for classroom use in the United States. Saint Germain reportedly told Ballard, no one in this world ever accumulated a great amount of wealth without the assistance and radiation of some ascended master. 
It is currently true that wealth has traditionally been concentrated in the hands of a small minority. Mankind's lack of spiritual growth has been caused by the very organization to which these alleged ascended masters belong. As if the reappearance of Saint Germain in 1930 was not enough, the I Am movement hosted another most distinguished speaker, Jesus Christ. Naturally, this newest second coming did not result in a thousand years of peace and spiritual salvation. It merely helped set the state for World War II. There was another messiah coming using one of the Brotherhood's most important symbols, the swastika. That Germain messiah's name was Adolf Hitler. Hitler was convinced that he had achieved higher levels of consciousness by means of drugs. The notion that Hitler was a druggie in his youth seeking mystical enlightenment through chemicals should come as no surprise. He remained a user his entire lifetime. The Thule Society believed in the Aryan super race, and it preached the coming of a German messiah who would lead Germany to glory and a new Aryan civilization. Another was the Vril Society, which had been named after a book by Lord Boulevard Lytton and English Rosicrucian. Houston Stuart Chamberlain, the mystic who had so influenced the Kaiser years later declared Hitler to the prophesized German messiah. It was a powerful new brotherhood faction steeped in brotherhood beliefs and symbols. Hitler's coming was to bring about a thousand year Reich, a millennium in which mankind would be purified and reach its highest state of existence. Concentration camps had become quite the fashion, beginning with the British in Africa, continuing with the Bolsheviks in Russia and the Americans' internment of Japanese Americans during World War II and barbarity in Nazi Germany. The camps were a part of the Nazis' so-called final solution. The final solution was not just an attempt to radically purify the human race by physically exterminating all Jews and other undesirables. It was an effort to kill them in accordance with a grand economic plan. Contributors to the SS, Nazi organization which oversaw the concentration camp system, the Schutzstaffel, were IG Farben, the German subsidiaries of ITT and General Electric. Perhaps the most surprising support for Hitler in the banking fraternity came from the director of the Bank of England, Montag Norman. The Bank of England gave Nazi Germany six million pounds of Czech gold reserves held by the bank. While Ford Motor Co. produced materials for the American army to fight Germany, Ford plants in Germany were turning out military vehicles for the Nazis. No matter who won the war, those banks and companies would profit and find favor with whoever emerged victorious. Nazism arose out of the mystical brotherhood network. Prince Bernard had been a member of the SS before the war and assumed his position as chairman of Shell Oil. Prince Bernard founded the international Bilderberg meetings, which are still held every year. The Bilderberg meetings, which are meant to be informal get-togethers of the world's top banking, industrialist political figures and other prominent people for the purpose of discussing world conditions and reaching an occasional informal consensus. When you deposit a dollar in a commercial bank, that dollar becomes the bank's to lend out, and the bank creates an additional dollar in which becomes the dollar in your bank account. That dollar in your bank account, however, is not a guaranteed dollar. It is simply a debt owed by the bank to you. That debt, however, quickly turns into money because you can spend it right away, and the bank still has your original dollar. In this way, the bank had created money out of nothing. As long as people use their checking accounts and do not demand much actual cash, a bank will be safe. A bank can go broke, however, if enough of its loans default, or it too many depositors demand actual cash and thereby wipe out a bank's small asset base. Making this system even more akin to something out of a maniac's delirium is the fact that banks, like other lenders, often have the right to seize physical property if its paper money is not repaid. The custodial goal expressed in the biblical Adam and Eve story of the making the people toil from birth until death is still being fulfilled. Another signed byproduct of the modern money system is taxation. Most Americans believe that the US government creates its own money. If that is true, then why would the government need to tax anyone? They could just create more money. The answer is that the US government does not create money. The Federal Reserve and commercial banks do, and they are not public entities. To obtain some of this money those banking entities create, the government must either tax or borrow. It does both, and the citizens pay. On September 12, 1974, the monarchy of Ethiopia was overthrown in a military coup. Six months later, the monarchy war entirely abolished by the revolutionary government, and Ethiopia was made a Marxist state complete with collective forms and government-owned industry. The move was kept alive by another Marxist group, the Popular Liberation Front. Famines, loss of life we hear so much about today, 
have been caused primarily by the Ethiopian government's attempt to squelch the Eritrean liberation movement by hindering relief shipments to drought regions. This amounts to an act of genocide. Behind all of this, we find once again evidence of the Brotherhood Network. The emblem of the Marxist regime prominently features the Brotherhood symbol of the all-seeing eye. After the election of communist leader Pol Pot as premier in April of 1976, Kampuchea suffered what some experts believe to have been the worst genocide since World War II, one million of the 7.5 million people. This genocide was part of a grand economic plan formulated by highly educated Kampuchean leaders who boasted advanced degrees in economics and social science from universities in France. The capital of Kampuchean Phnom Penh was forcibly evacuated and its residents were compelled to enter the countryside where rural population cooperatives awaited them. Private property was abolished. Citizens who were perceived as standing in the way of the new Kampuchean utopia by virtue of their occupations or education, and those people who objected to being forced into slavery, were murdered. Children were often recruited to carry out the murders, thereby helping to breed in the young generation of Kampuchean, a higher than normal incidence of psychopathology. By 1990, Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge re-emerged. They were supported by the US and eyewitnesses, say the CIA, provided weapons to meet the still brutal Khmer Rouge troops. The American CIA is also influenced by Mormonism, Freemasonry, and other lesser known brotherhood organizations. The Brotherhood Network is directly or indirectly linked to some modern assassinations. John Hinckley Jr., for example, belonged for a while to an American Nazi organization. The Aryan Nations, is as deeply influenced by Brotherhood-style mysticism as was original German Nazism. The goal of some terrorist groups is to maintain a so-called permanent revolution, i.e., a violent revolution that never ends. In the 1950s, a germ fog had been sprayed by a Navy ship in San Francisco, according to the Los Angeles Times. Any experiment designed both attack and defense capabilities of biological weapons a Navy ship blanketed San Francisco and its neighboring communities with a bacteria-laden fog for six days in 1950, according to U.S. military records. The records contained the conclusion that nearly every one of San Francisco's 800,000 residents were exposed to the cloud released by a Navy ship steaming up and down just outside the Golden Gate. The aerosol substance released by the ship contained a bacteria known as serratia, which was believed harmless by the military at the time but which has been found to cause a type of phenomena that can be fatal. The Army disclosed that it had conducted 239 open-air tests between 1949 and 1969. Of those, 80 were admitted to have contained actual germs. The tests were directed against Washington, D.C., New York City, Key West, Panama City, Florida, and San Francisco. The disease AIDS was attributed to this. The Soviet Union published charges in its official newspaper that AIDS was a biological weapon developed by the United States military. U.S. citizens have not only been hit by germs, but also by another type of bombardment. An intriguing segment on the TV program, NBC Magazine with David Brinkley, aired July 16, 1981, revealed that the northwestern United States was continuously bombarded by the Soviet Union with low-frequency radio waves. The radio waves are set at the approximate level of biological electronic frequencies. A May 20, 1983 newspaper article from the Associated Press reported that a machine known as the LIDA has been used by the Soviet Union since at least 1960 to influence human behavior with a 40 MHz radio wave. The LIDA is used in Russia as a tranquilizer and it produces a trance-like state. As I look around at the people of the US today, I wonder if the machine is still being used. The best-known form of organized humanism in the U.S. today is called secular, non-religious humanism. Secular humanism admits only the reality of physical existence and rejects spiritual and theological reality. It is a philosophy of strict materialism. There exists a united intention among many secular humanists to create a worldwide secular society. This sounds much like the what the WEF is aiming for with the help of the Wei Cho. Modern attacks take the same form as they have for centuries. New religions are labeled mysterious cults or evils that undermine everything good. The word cult is tossed around quite a bit to label new religions, even though a great many of those religions are not cults in the true sense of the word. Properly used, cult refers to a subgroup of a larger religion, such as a Christian cult or a Muslim cult. Any completely new or autonomous religion is properly called a sect, or better yet, simply a new religion. The Hittian religion cannot properly be called any of these as it is as old as religion itself. 
Although not many know of its ancient roots, it was established during the time of Lemuria as a continent. This type of social climate is easily generated today because most educated people fancy themselves knowledgeable about human psychology. By appealing to that vanity, if it's easy to breed animosity against new religions or even old ones not known to the modern world and otherwise tolerant people by couching religions in tolerance in psychological terms. Ironically, most of the anti-cult activism today comes from the so-called Christian right wing and it's not adhering to fundamentalist Christian beliefs. In an even broader sense, every mainstream religion today could be called a cult as they all share some resemblance to the Hidian religion that was the first established religion globally. The reason it is important to try to remain objective about new religions is that genius spiritual knowledge will probably only come about through a newer religion or an ancient unknown religion such as the Hidian religion which exposes the truth of all things. And for that reason it was hunted away from the minds of the people who once lived and expounded its teachings. As the world passes through the 2020s, we appear to be in an era much like the one that existed 200 years ago when Republican-style governments were established around the world. As back then, factions with brotherhood roots are still active in breeding war and social ills today. Marxist revolutionaries were killing people in Peru and the Philippines, and today, Zionist regimes are killing Palestinians. In Peru, the most feared Maoist guerrillas were members of a secret society called the Sendero Luminoso, which roughly translated means luminoso, shining path, or way of illumination. To the mind of the negative, spirituality and illumination have the opposite definition than that of the mind of the positive mindset. In May of 1990, the widely publicized desecration of Jewish graves in Haifa, Israel, was discovered to have been carried out by a secretive Jewish millenarian sect. A member of the sect admitted that his group perpetrated the desecration with a Machiavellian intent of heightening conflict between Jews and anti-Semitic forces. Today, the acts of Ox 7th in Israel bear uncanny resemblance to this event, as the Israeli military with its most advanced border system was overcome by Hamas fighters who just rode up to them and entered into Israel, flew right over them in makeshift crafts and caused terror upon the Israeli people. You judge it for yourself. In the 1990s, new Aida like immune-destroying viral diseases were being predicted by the World Bank. The World Bank and a group of doctors from the U.S. were sent on a five-year mission to Africa, their testing grounds in March of 1990 to find new viral diseases and conduct other activities. That didn't sound sus at the time. As history has shown you, if you do not create your own surroundings, someone else is going to create them for you and you may not like what you get. As evil as people wish to be, they can only be successful with your participation, be it active or inactive. Aradia has said that after World War III, the world will never know peace again until the Earth is destroyed. But understand that you are living in the time before such an event can happen. So the only question is, are you complacent or are you against world war? How can you sit there and say you care about your children's future, yet do nothing to assure that it be a pleasant one? If you take that stance, then you are basically saying that you don't care what the future holds for your offsprings or loved ones. Remember that the next time you look into their eyes, as you have heard, you are living in a construct that loops the cycles set by the Earth's overall mindset, and you have been down this road before many of times, yet the majority keep making the same decisions. As the Proctor of the Hideons, know that death is not the end, but the beginning of a new dispensation, a new paradigm. And this is but a school of thought to see who lives closest to its creator. Your being here and now is the truth. Your being here and now is freedom. Your being here and now is your heaven on earth. Everything can change, nothing has to remain the same. The only real constant thing between birth and death is breathing. Your breath is a bridge between you and your body. It is also a bridge between you and the forces of nature, as well as the universe. If the bridge is broken, you are no more in the body, and you are no more in the world. If you can do something with your breath, you will suddenly turn to the here and now present. You will come closer to the source of life. You can then transcend time and space. Technique number one. When your breath comes in, simply at first just observe for a single moment or a thousandth part of a moment. There is no breathing. Just before it turns up, before it turns outward. One breath comes in, then there is a certain point where all breathing stops. Then the breathing goes out. Before the breath is turning, in or turning out, there is a moment when you are not breathing. In that moment, the happening is possible. Because when you are not breathing, you are not in the world. The outgoing breath is synonymous with life. 
The spiritual gap between the two is of very short duration, but with keen, sincere observation and attention at practice, it will grow in duration and you will feel the gap. If and when you feel the gap, then nothing else is needed and you are then blessed. You will be able to go through the multidimensional door through the gap. You can use the African tree of life as a guide, or you can ask for an angel to guide you, or you can have both. Remember, keen observation means remaining or being with no words, no verbalization within, no warring inside, just remaining with. You will then just realize or see. The process is automatic and has been working for at least 12,000 recorded years. In that moment in the gap, you can easily become aware of who, what, and even why you are by that turning in the gap by just being aware and realize. Just be aware of the turning in breath and you will in a very short time become a realized soul. From being a realized soul, you will be able to become a God-man or God-woman. Don't think, just do what your soul is telling you. Proof is in the eating. You're eating. 2040 marks the end of the ERA of materialism and the beginning of the era of the fourth dimension also known as the ERA of the lower spirituality. We will change from Satanic 12 to the Creator's 13 in everything we do. Spiritual jazz and blues musicians when they detune their instruments to 437 cycles per second A, which is the same as the color purple in frequency, which is attuned to all plants and stimulates their growth, will affect the consciousness of all who hear their music. The king's and queen's chambers in the Great Pyramid is attuned to 437 cycles. However, the whole pyramid is attuned to 432 cycles. Prayer is a low-order application of mind over matter, while meditation is a mid-level application of mind over matter. One has to use the laws of quantum or the laws of the spirit. The subatom level can control the material, but the material cannot control the subatom. Sunatom thoughts can become things. One cannot change the outside world until one changes the inside world. Then the outside world can be changed quite rapidly through harmonics, frequencies, and vibrational energy of the vortex centers. Glutathimines is the key marker to all diseases of the body, along with vitamin C and bioflavonoids plus vitamin E and DHEA. More people of so-called modern societies have been conditioned or brainwashed to cow mentally that is manipulated by strong negative emotional energy and propagandized half-truths which causes them to go completely mad or crazy in crowds. When the upper-class rabble-rousers push the psychological and economic buttons, while they tend to wake up to sanity, reality, and truth, only one by one through critical thinking, experience, and personal pain, turn off you lower mind, relax, float upstream, lay down, let go of all negative thoughts, surrender to the void. This is the shining access, so tune in, relax the body and mind. All blocks are because of fear, Listen to the color of your dreams. This is not dreaming. This is not the end, nor is it dying. This is just the beginning. We have nothing to fear but the fear of our greatness, our beauty, and our genius. Worry, stress, and fear will drain your energy so that you will not be creative or productive. Seotan Nothi, know thyself, then get going on what you know. Money follows power, not the other way around. Power is only taken, never given. The power of compounded interest is grown by planting economic and mental seeds. Dreams are one's mind trying to cope with emotional trauma and other stuff. The emotional mind is designed to wipe out and deny deeper understanding and the process of death. Homopathy herbs is quantum physics that have been made simple by the ancient spiritual scientist that is based upon the body being electrical hormonal energy that can be controlled by the mind, provided one can overcome one's mental laziness through discipline, plus the bioenergy field. Be mindful of everything that you do before you do it. The philosopher asks, why this existence? The scientists ask how this existence. Theories become meaningless. Experience that is repeatable is the center. Unless one is receptive, ready, open-minded and vulnerable to the experience, it will not come to you. You must go to it. It is better to know than to believe. If you strip belief of all its outer pretty shell, you will find that it is based on nothing or on ignorance or on pure falsehood. It is clearly a gift from the spiritual forces to be given or allowed to love. And if the lovers do not show proper respect and reverent attitude towards the force field of love energy, the spiritual forces will take away the gift that has been given. Failure helps to clear away illusions. In the past ages, there was always a generation gap. In the aquarium age, there will be a humanity gap. Unless the masses of humanity consciously raises or develops their levels of awareness, they will be like the seeds and leaves of some great tree. Some will become beautiful flowers. Some will become food to be eaten and the rest will become fertilizer.
Emotional neuter disinterest is the true, but hidden, or suppressed, real opposite of the energy force field of spiritual love. When a critical mass, 17.5 of minds become truly open to infinite spiritual subatomic zero point, quantum, techion energy, in a scientific manner and not religious dogma of any kind, there will be so much revealed as to make all earlier strides seem puny indeed. The solution to all problems starts with the practice of spiritual principles. A vortex, major, is located in downtown LA, the gazebo on Oliveira Sea. Another vortex is located on Mount Shasta in Northern California, another on the offshore islands. The electric field, the gravity field, and the magnetic field are interconnected up to the block field where they intermingle. There is a interrelatedness that can be proven by rotating magnetic fields, plus RF generators, interlocked with two magnetic fields, rotating in different directions on AM modulated, at different speeds, 160 megahertz, with Tesla antennas, with Tesla coils, master oscillator RF exciter. All this can be pulsed for greater power. The electric field should rotate at twice the speed of the magnetic field. One should use a spheroid field. The RA life energy force is to be a conceptualization of the creative function. It can be harmed by the forces of evil or lakazan. There are three main forms of evil. One, ignorance. Two, lust, greed. Three, materialistic madness. Spiritual scientists develop sciences within. Before things can come into being, the intelligence of the Creator had to lay down a general set of immutable laws upon which the creation must be based. This provided a blueprint for life. He or she must base all actions in life on divine law, true science, as opposed to feelings, likes, dislikes, and emotions. By consciously tapping into the Western Sixth Dimensional or the African Seventh Sphere of the Tree of Life, you can not only develop yourself from the man-animal emotional level to the God-man passion level, thereby releasing your creative genius, but you will also live in mansions of glory, if not here and now, then later in the future. The seventh sphere is the mental or level of the mind. Maxwell's equations prove this point. Hyperdimensional. A spiritually aware being never brags, but is able and has the courage to do things that other people just talk about. One also knows how to do them better, too soon old, too late intelligent. Do not allow any unresolved negative past events to interfere with your present here and now energy. The only effective way to go through or get past negative or painful events is to consciously go through it in a emotionally detached way, but with awareness. The essence of who you are or the real you within has absolutely nothing to do with what you have and only a little to do with whatever you do to survive on a material level. Seek greater understanding, but do not expect greater details. There are too many who, by virtue of their slave-minded programming, their passivity, their dependency, their fear, their physical or mental laziness, and their negativity, seek to be shown every inch of the way, as well as to have the way demonstrated to them that each step will be safe and worth their while. Love, courage, wisdom, and spiritual growth cannot be certified by a number or type of academic degrees. We can rock this world's foundation, if we can conquer self-hate in holy unity, come together you and me in holy unity. Stand for righteousness, stand for holiness and be counted as one of the favored ones in the latter days. Realize the power of prayer and meditation when focused, that we can do and achieve anything that we desire or three-dimensionally imagine. People are more imprisoned by culture plus modern religion than by physics stimulant. Plant neurotransmitters are the keys to overcome cultural blocks to the multi-dimensional doors of the higher spiritual realms or levels. By going through the doors, one can directly contact the wise ancestors to receive answers to anything about how to do anything in the universe. Highly effective people just do not do different things. They do things differently. Treat your body and mind like a temple, not a woodshed. Gather up the past so the lessons learned will be more valuable in the future. How to handle the present spiritual crisis. The three stages that the world will be going through. One, the call. The moment your life changes. Something enters your life in such a way to let you know that you must change what or how you are doing what you have been doing. You will see the need to die to the old, or it will dissolve around you. 2. The Cocoon You will go inside of yourself and look honestly at self. You will go into the cave of you soul and sometimes suffer greatly with one's worst fears and greatest doubt of self. Sometimes you will feel as if you are falling apart, and sometimes you will feel that you are super great. 3. The Return you learn to create life from the inside out. You realize that fulfillment only starts from within. Your biggest fear stands in the way of your greatest love. Your fear is merely an illusion. 
Your greatest love is what is real. We have all volunteered to come to Earth knowing that this Earth is a school of gain through pain. The purpose is self-growth, and the path to growth is by going through pain on this plane. Everything is for our learning. Once the lesson is understood, there is no need for the pain. Understand that spiritual survival groups functions like a support group to help you get whatever you want. The biggest fear will be knowing how to give and how to receive. The next biggest fear will be doing or starting what you love to do. Most other people will not understand what you want plus love to do until you do it. Whatever you start to do, understand that it is just like a baby. Do not expect it to walk and talk too soon. Like the baby, it takes years. Find out what you want to do, then how to do it then make up plans, then gather materials plus people, then do it. The Love Wisdom System Skill Level of Development 1. Godman or Godwoman 2. Spiritual Scientist 3. Technician of Spiritual Truth Technician of Mental Truth 5. Technician of Emotional Truth 6. Technician of Physical Truth 7. Student of Truth One who consciously surrenders to truth and goes where it leads. There is a need for self-honor among people. And the highest type of honor is spiritual honor that is based on divine truths. If you do not know who you really are and just how powerful you really are, then your immune system will not know the difference between healthy cells and diseased cells within the body. If you would take vitamins, minerals, and or herbs for your physical immune system, why would you not take spiritual principles for your higher mind and your spirit? Everyone has a role to play in our play and our progress, no matter how small. 1. What is your secret passion? 2. What is your sense of pleasure telling you to do? 3. What is your life for? 4. Do you have a reacting mind or do you have an acting mind? 5. Do you have a disorganized or an organized mind? 6. Do you work hard or are you barely working or do you work smart? 7. Are you willing to study one hour per day? These must be answered honestly, truthfully. It is not necessary to live an easy life in order to live a good life. Loneliness is often the hidden disease of the middle and upper class lifestyle. The only way out of or overcoming any disease is not by resistance or pushing away, but by acceptance and going through the relationship experience of the disease process. This is a healing process and not a curing process that can allow a health process to naturally grow. What humanity needs more than anything else is a collage of sweeter knowledge that will through spiritual principles elevate everybody's level of awareness to the point where they can tap into zero point spiritual ether energy, which is the same as tachyon energy. This subatomic can be controlled by electrostatic fields that are unidirectionally pulsed. This tachyon ether energy field, when pulsed about 8,000 to 10,000 pps, will know God man or God woman skill development. This skill level has three separate parts that a spiritual scientist may develop, or may only develop two, or may only develop one, as he or she chooses, omen presence, oneness, or beingness. Omniscience near total awareness, knowledge wisdom. 3. Omniscience Personal Psychic Noretic Subatomic Zero Point Spiritual Universal Power These powers are deliberately and consciously and methodically scientifically cultivated by African and some Oriental people. Whenever the different cells find a body cell that has been successfully invaded and taken over by a virus, the T cells release a marker hormone into the infected cell that triggers the cell to rapidly age and die so that the virus cannot reproduce. What takes place within the body also takes place outside the body, within the society. Society's virus is the satanic mindset. Society's alpha T-cells are spiritual scientists and technicians. As people have evolved, they have evolved on a material technology level but have lagged behind on the psychological level. This is primarily due to the slant of European world culture, which has caused an emotional retardation and immaturity, along with massive cultural trauma and massive emotional denial. The unprocessed, unpurified, unrealistic ideas close the way to understanding which lends to or forces you to believe instead of knowing, and then the way to your success in life is closed. The symbol of the dead refers to the spiritual initiate or student or technician of truth. Initiation is a gradual process of dying to the path of being, child animal, reptilian ego, to be reborn to and in the higher parts of the spirit, to elevate into and become your divine God self. Before spiritual initiation, 99% of your thoughts flow from your beliefs. All of your beliefs flow from your identification with your ego personality, which society has trained you to develop a set of habitual thoughts and emotional responses with hair triggers that you think or believe characterizes you. 
These beliefs express the built-in limitations and negative capabilities of your ego personality and are the reasons for most of your failures. Your true higher self is unlimited in its potential to be, to know, and to do. To awaken and to bring your true higher self to the forefront of your life, you must first critically and logically think as it does. This is achieved by sowing carefully composed three-dimensional ideas, reflecting your spiritual divinity into the spirit while in the state of trance, known as affirmations. The process is primarily dependent on the state of trance, because in a state of trance the critical and discriminating functions of will are stilled, and therefore will not reject ideas that run contrary to your beliefs. A set of affirmations is given for each sphere of the tree of life. These affirmations, once sown into the spirit, become truisms, that is, premises that are held as true for the logical operation of the syllogistic logical faculty. In this manner, all of our rationalizations will be in harmony with the reality of our divine spiritual makeup. The Western religions conceive their God, set Lucifer Satan, as well as sets 72 followers or agents who were all called gods, as separate from humans and mankind, those humans who had lost their souls. Thus Western praying is an act of supplication of an essentially limited and weak being to an all-powerful being for its salvation. The Creator's salvation of and for humans was bestowed from the very beginning by endowing humans with its essential attributes. There are a few other psychological inhibitors or blocks to spiritual initiation and development that you must be aware of in order to be spiritually and humanly successful in this lifetime. 1. Morality Disease European-American Culture Disease 3. Romantic Relationship Disease 4. Nutritional Deficiency Disease 5. Retarded Emotional Development Disease Due to any or all of the above impacting with a person at a formative age, before one can achieve and especially maintain any real spiritual development, one must cure oneself or seek help from a professional to be cured from all five social diseases. If one does not effectively deal with these five social diseases to at least 80%, one or more of the five social diseases or elements from them will act as a lodestone around one's neck while one tries to rise through spiritual development. Do not take this lightly. Most people have been brainwashed to various degrees with emotional defense mechanisms to protect the brainwashing by morality disease mechanisms or by European-American cultural disease to just go along with society's norms and are afraid to change their approaches to anything, even if they can consciously see that traditional ways are negative and do not work to bring about harmony with the five social diseases. It is basically easy for the open-minded, common-sense people to learn and to apply the techniques to effectively deal with the five social diseases by applying the detoxification techniques and or the nutritional, psychological, spiritual techniques that will very clearly be determined and dealt with in three weeks to three months in subacute and acute cases and three months to three years in chronic cases. However, unless one has learned the skills of a master doctor of the mind, it would be wise to walk away from all terminal cases of this European cultural disease of mind and emotion. It takes time to acquire enough experience to develop the patience to see programs and to emotionally accept results or failures, and then to move on with a joyful soul that has been enriched by understanding some lessons of life. There are indeed some terminal cases, especially among males of the upper class, due to Western culture's negative effects, who cannot love anybody. These people should be avoided as if they had a commutative social disease because they do, but know it not. These psychologically poor people are unable to love because they are emotionally immature or emotionally underdeveloped because of being affected at an early age by a heavy exposure to one or more or all of the five social diseases. But even these terminal unable to love people can be helped to help themselves if they clearly understand and relive or redevelop the seven biological stages of love development that every child must go through in order to be able to truly and wisely love. But just being able to love is not enough. One must be able to manifest a maturely wise and disciplined love that is grounded in the principle of truth or ma'at. The seven stages of love development are Birth to six months The newborn baby cannot love. The baby when born goes through the veil of forgetfulness, which wipes out its awareness of past lives' experiences. Although the summary of the lessons of the past lives exist in the subconscious memory banks, which through spiritual development can be recalled. The baby only has needs, cravings, and very strong animal emotional drives to feed, because human and spiritual faculties have been forgotten, to be warm and to be dry and comfortable. 
If these few needs are taken care of, then the baby emotionally learns to accept in its biological database the fact is a fact that its needs will be satisfied, thereby creating a happy, content baby. Six months to 18 months. The baby now having emotionally accepted the fact that its needs will be satisfied, then and only then can the baby develop the ability to trust the provider of it care, which leads to the baby feeling that it can trust others and that it then develops the ability to be happy within itself because its needs are being satisfied. 18 months to three years. This period of the child's biological development is very critical. The baby must be held, touched, and feel warm, positive affection, or the baby will find it difficult to feel self-esteem or self-love. If placed in an enriched environment within the home, the physical and psychological development is speeded up by a factor of two or three, depending on how efficiently the baby's care providers apply the principles and techniques. If given positive discipline and wise guidance, they will be able to develop self-respect and self-control. This then leads directly to establish the foundation of caring for others and or brothers and sisters. For three years to seven years, the child develops an emotional fixated and possessive puppy love for its parents that is crudely sexual in nature. But because the child is psychologically unable to handle and express it, IT is generally repressed. Seven years to 11 years, if the child's possessive puppy is returned fully in mature, wisely loving way, the child will feel emotionally safe and secure enough to give up their primitive sexual feelings for its parents, as well as their emotional fixation. They then are able to transfer and or transmute their feelings, if they have spiritual training at home, to others, or to sports or hobbies, or to friends. This tends to cement their sense of self-respect, self-esteem, and self-love, that will stay with them throughout their lives. However, self-love is not true or mature love, but only a natural stage of development. For a 10 to 12 year old, it is normal and natural. For an adult, it is selfish, it is object-oriented, a sign of emotional immaturity and emotional underdevelopment. 11 to 13 years. If all of the other biological stages are passed through effectively, the child then develops conscience and ethics, either within oneself such as an emotional fixation on God, or on morals, or on heroes, or on peer groups. This leads to the psychological foundations being laid to sexual fulfillment through mature love. 13 to 19 years. If this biological development process is blocked or frustrated, then an unhealthy tendency will develop to split off love and sex into a division in the mind, which then tends to create many unnatural divisions in almost everything. This then tends to lead to setting up of unconscious fears, doubts and failures in relationships and in life. This tends to create a state of being alone and isolated, which people call being overly shy and being unable to be intimate with someone who one is sexual with. To be intimate with someone of the opposite sex requires that one be able to be openly honest, yet respectful of the individual character of a significant other. This requires brutally honest communications. This same type of brutal, honest communication is also good therapy for applying to self, life situations, and the five social diseases. This kind of communications requires risk-taking and courage that is based on trust, which was laid down emotionally by three years of age. Between 13 to 19 years is a trial and error, discrimination process for all humans that develops the ability to truly love in a mature, wise, disciplined way, which is active and not passive. Those people who can truly love have very powerful passions. The deeper that one is able to love, and the more one deeply loves, the more powerful becomes one's passion. Those with powerful passion can be triggered to hate, or to become violently angry by skillful manipulators of the mind, using toxic and or narcissistic psychological techniques. This is why one needs to develop a degree of conscious control over one's emotions, especially the negative emotions. This does not mean suppression or repression of any kind or to any degree. One must look at, understand, consciously accept totally and transmute them into positive emotions. To accomplish this transmutation process, one needs to have developed mental and emotional discipline back when one was 13 years old. However, it is never too late to correct a retarded emotional or mental development if one has the courage, the awareness and the desire to change for the better. You have nothing to lose but pain, fear, low self-esteem, isolation, doubt of self and lack of fulfillment. You have everything to gain because the ability to truly love in a wise way is the foundation of spiritual development. This will then lead one to the conscious development of their energy vortex centers within the body, 
which is the foundation for conscious communications with angels or divine spirits of the Creator. Aradia, as for myself, I do not want to live with a woman and not be able to touch her on the inside of her mind, the inside of her soul, the inside of her thigh because of the five social diseases and beta mind conditioning. I do not want to live with a woman who feels anger or worst rage or even mild resentment towards me as an individual or a man in general without understanding and being able to rationally communicate why. To me, this is just another form of toxic narcissistic violence, the sublet and most powerful form of violence just waiting for an opportunity to explode or implode. Any major division of belief or awareness, modern religion is a minor division of belief, between man and woman will breed violence sooner or later. Thus is a field of electromagnetic negative energy set up around each person in the relationship, which tends to draw like things and energy to each person, thereby making true or a higher form of love very difficult. When one is fortunate to get in conscious touch with their oneness, all is put in spiritual order, or at least then order can come about. The in touch with her oneness woman and man will grow to look at themselves as a holistic spiritual biological database for storing awareness, knowledge or wisdom depending on how efficient your self-esteem wants to be. The main hard drive is located in the energy vortex centers, also called chakras. The main software is located in the belief system, in the undeveloped spiritually aware, then the spiritually developed man and woman, through practicing spiritual principles and through breath exercises, that takes the woman and the man to the gap, then to the energy vortex centers. They will joyfully realize and know that they are indeed electromagnetic energy beings having a human experience. Discipline, self is the highest form, is necessary for any degree or form of healing, as well as any degree or form of development. The opposite of discipline is excess in all its forms. Meditation is necessary for higher spiritual development. The healing of a nation starts at home, with you, and you are the example of your tribe's thought. We can change the consciousness of this world to a more positive one if we each just do our part within ourselves. Respect to Brother Obalaji Kefren Rust, spiritual scientist and master herbalist, Los Angeles, California. Ahil Am.